Thank you, Mr. Jahana, for joining us. Um, it, it has been an honor in the past few months working with you and the Board of Directors. As the ECDC is the development institution and looking into developing the Eastern Cape, the economy of the Eastern Cape for the benefit of the people and the businesses that are operating in the province. What has been your observation since joining the ECDC, especially on the developmental side of, um, of the mandate of the corporation? So thank you very much. Firstly, it's a privilege and an honor to, to have the opportunity to serve at the on the board of ECDC. It's an important institution for the province. It's an important institution for the development of the people of the Eastern Cape. I think uh, the observations from a public point of view are not, were not unexpected. Uh, there's high demand for services. SMEs are looking for for funding, they are looking for training, um, uh, people are looking for uh, facilities to run businesses in, whether it's small manufacturers or just uh, uh, services kind of SMEs. And they are looking to ECTC uh, to, to be the provider uh, and enabler for that kind of uh, uh, businesses. I think the bit of a shocking aspect for me uh, around the internal capabilities of the ECDC. Uh, my early observations is that the internal capabilities of ECDC are not able to match the, the public expectations. So which means something dramatic needs to be done uh, to bring ECDC to the level in which, at which it can be able to meet the demands and the expectations of uh, its, its clients and the broader Eastern Cape uh, community. So, so two aspect, pent up demand for services, high levels of expectation. I also think that COVID-19 has further exacerbated the problem. But systemically, in terms of the internal capabilities, the ECDC of today is not able to meet this, uh, this, this, this increase in demand. So I think that's what the board needs to deal with. Thank you for that, Mr. Jahana. Um, can you also share with us um, what would be the external capabilities um, just now outside of the ECDC that the province has to look at when we're positioning ourselves in the national and the international community? I think it's an important question you're asking. Uh, and I can, I can respond to that by talking about the, the competitive advantage of nations. And... Uh, uh, nations have to look at what are their native capabilities and they you have in terms of the strength and they need to use those to build uh, on those strengths and actually in, uh, build new capabilities. So if you look at it from a factor endowment point of view, what is it that is natural, naturally available in the Eastern Cape? So obviously you've got, you've got the size that's about 7 million people which means you've got the demand for services. Whether that nature of the demand looks like, how it looks like is a different issue. Whether the, the level of indigency is, is low or high is another issue, but at least you've got the demand for services because whether it's food or other, pro other products, uh, when you have seven million people, which means the demand side, the demand factors are there, uh, and whether people can afford the service or not is another issue. The other element is the fact that you are endowed with the natural resources, land, water, coastal line, and a combination of people, demand for services, and skills, as well as the, the, the factor endowment around land, natural resources, becomes very, very important. If you think at the, of countries like in the, in, the, in the Middle East, where it's a desert, they, they stand no chance of, uh, of uh, being strong in agriculture, for example. Uh, obviously, they have to rely on precision agriculture, which means greenhouse farming and so on, and, and technology. So, which means when you, you, you're struggling with uh, some of the endowment factors, nations have to build certain capabilities to offset that. We have the opportunity of having natural resources, land, uh, the ocean, and people in terms of the skills uh, and, and just the demand side, we have to work on the skills to make sure that we have the relevant skills that can drive the economy. So opportunities are there for investment. So 
external opportunities are there. What we need to be able to do is to scale our people, making sure that we can crowd in private, private sector investment mm -hmm. to invest in key industries. Uh, but as I say, the biggest, single biggest opportunities is always going to be in small industries. Small manufacturing, I always believe that, uh, uh, I mean, you know DTI has the Black Industrialist Program. I'm always of the view that Eastern Cape's black industrialists are going to be in small industries. And we have to support uh, the development of small manufacturing and other small industries in the, in the province. So opportunities are there, but we have to work with business, with communities to unearth, to unveil those opportunities and, and make them real. Mr. Shahana, just still on the capabilities, yeah. what, what would you say are just the three top um, sectors that we as the Eastern Cape um, and of course the ECDC should pay much attention to, just looking at the current economic environment? Um, so which yeah. ones would you say the Eastern Cape immediately needs to look at? So I think, I think it's very clear, if you look at from a factor endowment point of view, Agriculture is a very important sector. There's a global demand for food, uh, not just to serve Eastern Cape, but globally. So if you look at the, Africa, uh, the, the African Development Bank uh, strategy, one of their five strategies is uh, Feed Africa yes. by 2025. And my sense is that Africa will only be able to feed uh, itself when there's private capital flows into rural agriculture, we improve this, the production proficiency of the rural farmer and really begin to modernize farming. And I think that's an important thing. And if you look at the, the Africa Continental Trade Agreement, presents opportunities for intra-Africa trade and the export of agri products uh, into, into the rest of the continent. And of course, there's global demand. China has certain commodities that is demanding Europe the same, US the same. So, Agriculture being is very key, and Eastern Cape is well positioned to do that. We have to do it right. We have to make sure we can do agro-processing, we can do primary production beyond subsistence farming, uh, if, you, if you like. That's one aspect. The second area is around manufacturing. Manufacturing for the built industry. So the construction sector, the, we have to be clear about commodity mapping inside, inside the ECDC so that we can understand which commodities will support the built environment so that that can be manufactured locally to supply, to meet local demand. And again, uh, clearly, the, the, the area of uh, automobile, we have to have a strong hold on to it. We have to do everything to hold on to it. That's why the, the agency, the subsidiary of ECDC, uh, IDC, uh, has to, is playing a critical role in making sure that the component, the supporting industries that support the automobile sector continue to be active and then you actually be able to transform the, 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 sub, the value chain of the, of the auto sector in the Eastern Cape. So three big industries. And of course, there are, new, there are new aspects in agriculture. The cannabis, it has come to life. It has to be real. It has to begin to in, impact primary producers, outgrowers, all of that. And these are the spaces that we expect ECDC to be playing a prominent role as a lead development agency for the province. Yeah. Lastly, Mr. Shahana, just before we sum up, um, what would you say then are the long range um, plans that you, you envisage um, for the ECDC? And maybe also while you look at that, you take us through which of those would be things to start looking at now from, from a short-term um, point of view? I think the ECDC plays a very important role in the development of the Eastern Cape's economy. And it has to renew itself to, to claim its rightful place as a lead development agency coordinating the economic development in the Eastern Cape. And to do so, we have to think about how to build capabilities uh, to support SMEs in terms of uh, uh, development finance and find new models of doing that without having high impairments. The areas around real estate investment, largely building infrastructure for economic development, because if you look at industrial parks uh, that we have, that needs, to be re that needs renewal or revitalization, those are that's infrastructure for economic development. We have to look at other 
areas of investment to stimulate the economy. So if I, as an example, when you are going to start an abattoir with a feedlot, a lot of capex must be spent in building the infrastructure before you can even go to the working capital. Yet, an abattoir and a feedlot in the Eastern Cape has a huge economic pull through in terms of primary production, in terms of uh, uh, animal husbandry and, uh, and uh, uh, stock farming, so to speak. So therefore, an ECDC together with its own cooperation partners should be able to invest in that critical infrastructure and enable a private sector operator to actually lease the infrastructure and be able to get into, into business quickly. That way, will enable local businesses to participate in the, in the, in the agro-processing sector without having the burden of uh, having to invest heavily in CAPEX. So, so a, 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 a well thought through real estate strategy focusing on building uh, economic development infrastructure for industry, uh, an extensive risk base uh, strategy to drive SME funding becomes important. And again, the ability to look at project pipeline development uh, for, for large-scale project, whether it's a cable cut uh, feasibility uh, study for Potts and Johns a municipality, we have to be able to understand, will it really work? If yes, what is the business case? And then we begin to attract, to go and promote it as an investment opportunity. Developing a pipeline of large-scale large transformational infrastructure project for, for the province is what ECDC needs to, needs to have almost on the, on, the, on the investment side beyond promotion, but really crowding in investment on well-packaged projects, uh, pro projects, a project pipeline that ECDC can, can, can take to market. And I think the last point for me, which is the, almost like the fourth pillar in terms of the thinking, is how we enable, how we support government, whether it's a local government or provincial deliver on its mandate. If you look at the municipalities today in the Eastern Cape, a lot of the small towns uh, are road towns. And those towns, are, whether it's Lusigasig or Flagstaff or Engob for that matter, those towns are growing, but they are growing along the single road, which tends to be either a provincial or national road. Mm -hmm. And congestion is happening there. The ability to plan to do urban development planning for those municipalities is limited. If you look at Lusikisika as an example, just even beyond just there, the, it's a single street town. All the retail development is happening around that street and there's congestion. So economic growth, they put differently, mobility, ease of mobility is an important element of economic growth. So if, if it takes a day for people to go and buy a bag of cement because the, the road is congested, then you slow down the, the economy. So we have to find the ability for within ECTC to have a, a much more high-end planning unit that looks at urban development planning to support the town planners in the small towns so that we can actually extend the towns and make them a little bit more porous in terms of mobility, ease of movement, and then we unlock the economies of those towns. So uh, that's, that's an easy to say that's driving development of the, of the province. So we have to be in the major projects, whether it's in Mzumvubu Dam or is a, is a talk of a massive investment in a town in Coffee Bay, we have to be in it we, because we are interested in making sure that these things happen. The ocean's economy is still a well-spoken of, but it's a pipe dream. We have to see practical steps of doing it. And it's going to be a combination of uh, uh, craft harbors, small harbors being developed, river mouth harbors being developed. But most importantly, how do we build uh, pack houses for community fisheries? Uh, whether it's in Kwebe or it's in Coffee Bay or in Potts and Johns, where uh, the small uh, co-ops of, uh, of fisheries or individuals can actually be able to harvest the sea product and have a pack house that is able to drive that to market. 
so that people don't go and harvest crayfish and it gets bought for, for, for 10 rands, when actually the, the price of this thing could sit at 100. So these are the interventions, and these things are not complex things, but they need us to be invested in finding the right models, both commercial and operational. So, so a much more bigger role for ECDC, and ECDC that can actually do all these things and be able to support the province deliver on the, on the bigger agenda of improving the lives of the people of the province. So that's, that's kind of what in my mind I've signed up for. So I hope the board will see the same picture of a much more stepped up ECDC that is able to play its own role in a meaningful way. Thank you.